His eyes were cool, calm, and collected. As he entered the jungle, he was ready for warfare. Guerrilla warfare? No, my friends. Walrus warfare. Hey, what's up, guys? Walrus here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. I'm bringing you another episode of how to play Domination as a team where killstreaks, classes, and perks as well as positional roles are all coordinated in a group effort to pull out the victory. Right here we get a good look at the sea flag spawn, and in my opinion this is the most advantageous side of the map. The most, uh, It's the best side of the map, best spawn to hold. We're going to take a couple, we're going to take a quick look at a couple reasons why. And the first um, is the sniper's nest, even though we don't really do too much sniping out of it. But uh, it gives you a good look at the middle of the map, the flank of the map. And then the next key point is the B flag hut, which obviously sits atop the B flag. And um, in this game, what I'm going to do is highlight two, two different uh, positional roles. And the first is support. Uh, my friend and teammate, Mr. Cajun, is going to be uh, showing us a little bit how to play, a little bit on how to play the support role. And uh, the next role is going to be somebody that rushes, and I'm going to be doing the rushing. So you can see um, right here that uh, I'm prone behind those three barrels. It gives me a really good element of surprise as I try to, try to spray those guys down, but then end up getting sniped by that dude behind Big Rock. And um, let's talk a little bit about uh, responsibilities for for somebody that's going to rush. So, um, you know, I think a lot of times in public lobbies I'll see uh, I'll see one of two things happen. I'll either see the whole, the whole team immediately try to cap the, the home flag, the home spawn flag, or I'll see the whole entire team just ignore the home spawn flag and go straight to B. And in a coordinated team effort, you have two defensive players um, playing in the back. You have two support players playing in the middle of the map, um, providing support on B. And you have two aggressive players that um, their whole whole job is to keep it as difficult as possible for the enemy to get to their desired location. And um, as somebody that's going to rush, your your primary goal when the game starts is to cap the B flag. And you're going to have some help from uh, your support players. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, in this particular game, I think it, it took us three, yeah, third time was a charm. On the third third attempt, we finally got it capped, and you can see Cajun doing a good job right there defending it once we have it capped. So um, once once that B flag is capped, you're going to want to be doing what I'm doing right here, which is you're going to hit the flank of the map, and you're going to start building up your kill streaks. You're, you're going to get into the enemy spawn and uh, just cause a bunch of mayhem and havoc. Build up your kill streaks and um, start setting them off. So uh, let's talk a little bit about my kill streaks and what I'm using. Um, well, I've got Hardline Pro on. That's absolutely ideal. I've got uh, Slide of Hand, and I also have um, Marathon Pro. And those those perks again, they are ideal perks for somebody that's going to rush. Um, Hardline Pro because the kill streaks that you're going to run with are Spy Plane, Counter Spy Plane, and the Care Package. And in this particular game. I get all my kill streaks four times, so that's four different care packages. That's four opportunities to reroll them if I'm not happy with uh, with the first drop. And um, we've got Mr. Rampage, my good my good friend and teammate. He's doing a great job playing defense on this particular game, keeping our spawn at the C flag and and uh, defending C flag as well. And um, it's a really good idea, you guys. That until you you know until you are sure you're going to win. Um, it's a good idea to let that defensive player, like I, like I let Rampage right here, take that Blackbird. Um, let them have whatever is in your care packages, just because your attention in the beginning of the game and, and in the middle of the game, and all the way through if, if it's a close game, um, it really needs to be on uh, staying active and getting getting back to the enemy spawn, causing a bunch of problems and and uh, you know making it as difficult for them as possible to get again to their desired location. You want them to be focused mainly on you and where you're at and what you're doing and and how they can avoid you as opposed to um, whether or not they can they can cap a flag or they can get to B. Um, and if you're doing a good job um, then that's that's what's going to be going on for a large majority of the, of the game and um, we're going to talk a little bit as to why I haven't capped A and also as to why nobody on my team has really attempted to try and cap A in just a minute but for now we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about Cajun and uh, and his role right here so um, as somebody that plays support your your primary your primary objective your first responsibility is to help your your aggressive players get that get that B flag capped and um, 
you know something that you want to use a good a good tactical piece of equipment is the the willy peat um, and uh, a good tactical piece of equipment for the aggressive player is the claymore we're going to get a look really good look at uh, how the claymore works um, works right here and something else that you guys definitely want to implement is is communication um, you know I, we we pretty much just stay in, in party chat throughout the throughout all the games that we play and right here my claymore goes off I'm able to tell Cajun and he he again you know he he turns his attention from the B flag to the backside of the B flag hut pathway and that's what working as a team is really all about you know you wanna you wanna use your equipment um, in coordination with one another see I put down another claymore to to let him know if it goes off so that he can he can uh, stay alive and and keep that area of the map um, secure for us and um, you know once once he's able to, you know, once once his uh, once the backside of the B flag hut pathway is clear, then he's able to turn his attention again to the B flag and make sure nobody nobody stays on it. And um, right here, uh, you know, I'm back up in their spawn, and let's talk a little bit about why I have not capped A and nobody's capped A yet. So let's let's uh, let's examine the whole the whole situation up to this point. Have we lost the C flag once? No, sir. How about the B flag? No, sir. Do we have map control? Yes, we do. Do we have spawn control? Oh, yeah. How about flag control? We got that. It's two to one. And that's really what you want in a domination game. Now, the uh, the reason for not capping A isn't because I'm trying to kill or It's because of, uh, of this reason that you're going to take a look at right here. Here is pretty much the entire enemy team spawn. All of them except one. And they are spawning in this location because this is the location that we have dictated that they will spawn at. It's been on our terms so that we know where they're going to be coming from and so that we can get uh, in a better position to take care of business when they try to approach us like you're gonna see Cajun do right here. Now um, if, uh, if we were to cap A then it makes an already interesting and sort of crazy spawn system in Black Ops become even more interesting and crazy. And that's really not what we're after when we play as a team. We're after an easy win, we're after a formulated victory, and uh, that's what you get when you have those three elements, map control, spawn control, and flag control. And um, I guess the fourth element is uh, team coordination. And um, let's talk a little bit about rerolling care packages. So uh, Hardline Pro, you got a couple of players using Hardline Pro. And um, I think this is, yeah, this is gonna be my second care package that I get. And I have, I have a couple of uh, ground rules for um, for our team when when we decide to reroll care packages. If it's a counter spy plane, if it's a spy plane, if it's an RC car, um, occasionally if it's ammo and if it's a Valkyrie rocket, those are the care packages that we like to reroll. And you know you may agree with that, you may not agree with that, but this is a uh, this is something that works. This is a method that has worked really well for us. And um, we have we have two or three people running with spy planes and counter spy planes. So getting that in a care package is is really not going to, you know, be all that useful since we already have them going off throughout the game anyway. Um, what we're looking for in those care packages is something a little more destructive. You know, hopefully dogs, hopefully a chopper gunner or a gunship or um, a sentry gun, even though in this particular game the sentry gun does absolutely nothing. It gets taken out right away. Or Napalm or Rolling Thunder, those or Blackbird, those are really ideal, and that's what we're going after, and that's when we, you know, why we would why would re, we would re-roll those particular kill streaks. Now, in this game, um, my third care package turns out to be the Valkyrie Rockets, and we're winning by so much, and the game's pretty much in the bag that um, I decide it would make for some pretty good looking gameplay footage if I went ahead and blasted those those Valkyrie Rockets off. So you'll see that in a minute here. And um, one thing that I would I would like to point out is, uh, you know, I think somebody, one of my high school baseball coaches told me this, but, um, you know, a team that plays as one is in most cases going to beat one team that plays as individuals. And with that being said, what I'm going to do is put links in the description for you guys to a couple of resources that I hope will help you find some teammates because to me it's just a whole lot more fun to win as a team player than to than to lose but maybe get a good score um, as just you know an individual as a solo player on a on a public lobby and um, you know that's another thing this is not, this obviously isn't a game battles game I mean it's it's this is a public lobby and we have a coordinated 
group effort going. We're all communicating with each, with each other and we're playing a bunch of random guys that probably are not communicating with each other. So yeah, it's, it's a massacre. Um, you know, we, we all, I think all of us except for one or two players in this game get pretty good scores and, um, we all have a, have a good time, but, um, you know, hopefully those resources will enable you guys to, to meet, meet up with some new people, make some new friends and, um, hopefully have some more fun just playing as a team, um, in Call of Duty Black Ops. So, uh, you know, I would really like it if you guys would let me know what you think about this video, comment on it. Um, you know, if you, if you liked it, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. And then leave me some, some constructive criticism as to how I can, you know, um, do better, I guess, in the next video that I put up like this. Um, uh, thanks a lot, you guys, for checking out the video. We're coming to an end right here. And um, that's, gonna, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Oh, uh, the next video that I do, I think, is going to be just about classes, perks, killstreaks, and, and um, coordinating those aspects of, of the of the game together as a team. So you can look forward to that. Again, please rate, comment, and subscribe if you liked it, and uh, know that more of these videos are on the way. All right, fellas, peace out. The battle had ended, with the enemy team being squashed underneath the mighty flipper of the walrus.